As stated previously, the five necessary programming components are placed on the ziggurat in a hierarchy so that the components are addressed in order. <laughs> your plan for programming for your student with autism began with level one, which we just discussed. Let's look at level two now. Level two of the ziggurat is reinforcement. Since we intend to follow the precepts of applied behavior analysis and positive behavior interventions and supports, our goal is to increase appropriate behavior. The slide states that without reinforcement, there is no intervention. I'll go a step further and say that without reinforcement, there is no learning. That's how important this is. A reinforcer is by definition, something, anything that follows a behavior and increases the likelihood that the behavior will occur again. It's okay to think of reinforcement as a form of payment for appropriate behavior. I've had people resist that, but it's okay. Reinforcement is supportive rather than aversive. It's also an evidence-based intervention with tons of research showing it works. Most of us believe we deliver lots of reinforcement to our students, though we probably deliver less than we think. Reinforcement is delivered upon the occurrence of appropriate behavior, which means that it's a consequent intervention. Many people think that a consequence is always negative and synonymous with punishment. We've all heard an authority figure say something like, there will be consequences, young lady. <laughs> but in reality, the word consequence simply means anything that follows. Though most people think that rewards are the same as reinforcements, there's really a big difference. A reward is something that a large part of society values, such as money, or a trip, or a trophy. Those are nice things. But the student with autism may not value those things at all. The great thing about reinforcement is that it's tailored to the specific preferences of your specific student. If your student really, really likes toy action figures or dill pickles or spinning himself in your teacher chair, then he's more likely to do something you ask in order to get that. I think you understand this concept. Before you leap to the conclusion that you already know what the student likes, however, be aware that you might be wrong. I challenge you to conduct a reinforcement survey to check your assumptions. He may like lots more things than you thought. In the following slides, we'll discuss menus of reinforcements, scheduling reinforcement, and types of reinforcements. <laughs>